Hello folks and welcome to Formula One Paddock Pass, your post-race edition for the 2018 Bahrain Grand Prix. What a race, uh, loved it, absolutely loved it as I think everybody did, as I'm, I'm sure uh, all you guys did as well. Uh, literally, lights to flag, my little heart was beating. Um, such, such uh, an exciting race. Uh, I don't think I'm overdoing it to say uh, that we all really, really loved it. Um, of course, drivers with so much to do from the grid. Lewis Hamilton with his grid penalty, Max Verstappen having crashed uh, in qualifying. And the perceived wisdom through the paddock was that Red Bull Racing had the fastest car in race conditions from what we'd thought we'd learnt over the weekend to that point. Of course, it was an all Ferrari front row with Vettel on pole, Kimi Raikkonen alongside him. And sure enough, at the start of the race, Vettel got away. Valtteri Bottas from third of the grid pulled up into second. Raikkonen slots in behind him. And then behind, Hamilton and Verstappen start forcing their way through. Lap two, they make contact. Verstappen has a puncture. Ultimately, the damage done to his car in that contact with Hamilton puts him out of the race. And at the same time, Daniel Ricciardo. Electrics fail on his car. And within five laps, both Red Bulls, as we said, the team expected to be possibly the fastest in race trim, is out of the Grand Prix. From that point on, it becomes a really interesting strategic battle between Ferrari and Mercedes. Lewis Hamilton had started on the soft tyre. Bottas, Vettel, Raikkonen all started on the super soft. So they had to pit a lot earlier. Now, both Ferraris went from the super soft onto the soft. Mercedes left their stop later and put Bottas onto the medium, which is exactly what they did when Lewis Hamilton came in for his sole pit stop. So with both of the Mercedes on a one-stop strategy, Ferrari, well, they had a decision to make. And ultimately, they told Sebastian Vettel, you're going to have to make that set of soft tyres last to the flag. Not easy. Just under 40 laps for the German to make a set of tyres which should only really have lasted 20, 25 laps. They can last all the way to the flag. Raikkonen, however, remained on a two-stop strategy, but when he came into the pits for his second and final stop, absolute disaster. The rear left didn't go on. The boys putting the tyre on were still in place, trying to get that wheel on when the car was dropped down, and Raikkonen went on his way, hitting one of his boys, as we understand it, a broken left leg. Uh, he's in hospital at the moment. Wish him well. Um, yeah, and as we understand it, that rear left tyre hadn't actually been changed. So when the car left, he's got three super softs on the tyre, one soft on the, on the car. Three super softs on the car, should I say, not tyre. One soft, and obviously with three and one, you can't carry on, retired from the race. That ultimately put Hamilton into the podium position, and that's your top three, Sebastian Vettel. Valtteri Bottas, who by the last few laps on those medium tyres was hunting down Vettel and breathing down his neck in a car that the rear sliding all over the place, Vettel doing all he can to hold Bottas off, just did enough. Bottas second, Hamilton third at what was, I mean, we haven't even spoken about the midfield yet or anything else. It was a great race, even just for those podium places. Here's your top three. Two wins out of two. Uh, but that one looked like hard work. 38 laps on one set of softs. 39. It was was it 30? I'm sorry, 39. Yeah. Well, was, I didn't count, so. Was that always the intention? No. How did you do it? I don't know. I guess, uh, you know, obviously we came in first because we wanted to keep track position and then Mercedes had the luxury of choosing a strategy. I guess at that point their own, only way to, only hope to win the race was uh, with equal pace was to do something different which they did. Uh, we couldn't really pull away on the soft to open a massive gap to then walk past on fresher tyres at the end. So, yeah, uh, we had to think of something else. We talked about that scenario before the race and uh, when they were telling me what they want to do, first of all I had to think and scratch my head, what was that again this morning? But, uh, yeah, I got it then and uh, obviously uh, it was down to me to try and make it work. Uh, it was very tough, especially 10 laps to go, I had a, you know, another hit, the tyres went, went down and uh, started to really slide. It was difficult to be consistent and keep the car on the line. When he was there and in DRS, in range, I tried to yeah, just get the energy sorted so that I had all the boost down the straight to make it difficult for him. And uh, it was just enough, so uh, yeah, obviously a uh, big, re big release uh, or big relief when I uh, crossed the line and I was very happy, yeah. Was there a thought about bringing you in that, that maybe didn't happen after Kimi's pit stop? Or, or was that never the intention to bring you in at all? I had to do anything with Kimi's stop. I saw that there was an issue and they told me that Kimi had to retire. 
but uh, yeah, obviously for us, you know, I guess the worst that could have happened was finish third, because the gap to Pierre in fourth uh, was quite big. So uh, nothing in a way, nothing to lose. Um, so I think we we tried to make it work, and it just it just worked. I don't think the race could have been another lap or two, so uh, it was good. Can you make it three out of three in China? Well, we'll see. I don't know where we're going. Obviously, uh, you know, we need to improve. Um, but having you know the first two races, one's like the one is like this, one like that, is difficult to predict where we are going to be. But uh, we need to press on and keep on working. All of us uh, inside the team trying to make the car better, and then we should be in good shape. So close. Um, are those ones the harder ones to take when it is literally inches away? Yeah, for sure. You know, it's, it's when it's so close, and after, after the race, you start to think about every lap, every corner. If there's something you could have done better, um, if you could have done better something with the back markers, getting quick, quicker through them, and so on. But I felt like I did a good race. I didn't do any mistakes. I felt the pace we had was actually better than we expected. Uh, I can promise I gave everything I had, so it was not, not, not enough today. You could see that you were given it everything. Did all that uh, winter testing mileage on the mediums come to come to bear today? Yeah, I actually didn't try the medium uh, before uh, before the race this weekend, So, and it, it worked well. We could do a really, really long stint, and uh, definitely it was useful. <coughs> There's got to be a lot of positivity in the team at the moment that you are able to mix it. And I guess that in this era, even on different tyre strategies, it is still so close between everybody. It, it is very close and uh, yeah, it seemed to be that th there was many possibilities today with the strategy. So I think if Red Bull would have been, um, you know, having, having a clean race, they would, could have been in the mix as well. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting season. Uh, we, we still have work to do definitely in places like Bahrain. So yeah, we can take some positives, but the main thing for us is to really, really learn learn from this weekend uh, why we weren't yesterday in such a good pace compared to uh, testing and, and Melbourne. It was always going to be a, a run of damage limitation but right at the start very nearly even more damage. Max said he gave you enough room, did he? I don't know, I'd have to watch it but I mean I was on the edge of the track I'm pretty sure um, but I, I need to watch it back but in the heat of the moment it didn't seem that it was the case. Um, yeah. And, uh, don't really know what to say. It was it was an unnecessary contact. Really, it wasn't really need no need in that early stage of the of the race. But um, these things do happen. From that point on, though, you had a phenomenal race. Moving to the medium tire for that long final stint. Did you think you had the pace to take it to those guys? Was it a was it a gamble or a calculated one? I think it was a calculated. It was or, or we'd already planned from the start to do that strategy. I think it was a it was a difficult one because. Ideally, I'd had to get past those four cars earlier on in the first three laps, and I got stuck with the traffic, and obviously I had the collision with Max, which really nearly took me out of the race. Um, I just feel lucky that it didn't take me out of the race. And so that, that's definitely obviously a frustrating scenario. I didn't know if the car was damaged. And, uh, and then I was behind these guys for ages, so it wasn't until lap eight, lap nine, that I actually got past them. But the guys ahead were too far ahead, and um, so really the race was lost at the start of the race. Um, partly through my being maybe too, making the wrong decision in turn one, position wise. And then after that, just um, not being aggressive enough. But you know, there's a long, long race and I wanted to see the whole race. But um, yeah, anyways, we live to fight another day and uh, I still got good points. So really happy with third. I just need to, um, I wish there was another five laps because I would have caught them. You get your chance in seven days time. How hungry are you for that win in China? Well, I mean, I think, I do feel like, particularly the first race, my performance was really on point, and in the race today, I think it was on point. Maybe not so much in qualifying, but it's definitely been a difficult weekend in that respect. But I really, really am keen to. I'm glad that the race is back to back because we're coming on strong. We're uh, it's going to be a close race in Shanghai. The Ferraris have shown that they are incredibly quick. So um, yeah, but it is a good track normally for me. So let me see if I can get the car where I need it and. Um, and really take the fight to, to Sebastian. So that's your top three. As we said, there's a lot more to discuss and to digest after today's Grand Prix, but we will start with a team that, as we said, didn't even see five laps, and that's Red Bull Racing. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo with an electrical issue, Max Verstappen with that contact with Lewis Hamilton. Here's what they had to say after a race that ended far too early. Yeah, just coming into turn eight, everything switched off. So as if uh, I pressed the off switch, so I lost Lost everything, lost the dash, power, gears, so uh, it seems a 
battery, electrical, some some form of issue there. Um, yeah, it's brutal, I guess. You know, you wait, especially a night race, you wait the whole day, try and, you know, save all that energy and adrenaline up, and then after two minutes, it's gone. So, um, yeah, this sport can be pretty brutal. Uh, yeah, days like this, I don't, don't really enjoy it. Out with gearbox issue, we understand. Was that caused with the contact with Lewis? Well, I think it was with the diff as well. Uh, initially, with the, with the hit. So, uh, yeah, it's not what you want. Talk us through the uh, incident with Lewis from your perspective. Well, I had a good toe onto the straight. Uh, the last corner was good and uh, I went for the move. Then we got a bit squeezed uh, with the McLaren, but then, you know, from middle to the, the X of the corner, I was ahead and suddenly I felt a touch on, on my rear tire. Um, so yeah, then my, my race was over because I got a punch. It's such a tight complex of corners around that one, two. Could you have given more space? How difficult is it to judge how much room no, there, there was, is around there? There was enough space on the left. More than a car's width, I think? Yep. Thanks, Max. So, uh, yeah, so that's your uh, your Red Bull drivers. Christian, can we can we grab a quick one? Quick yeah, um, disappointing day. Um, do we know ultimately what the problem was for Daniel? Uh, it's a problem within the energy store. So, uh, yeah, it's caused a sudden complete power loss. So, yeah, dreadfully frustrating because we got a very quick race car today. So. You know, one of those things, but uh, only only five days till the next event. And um, look, we all love watching Max race. He's a he's a fighter. We know that. Does he have to temper that a little bit? No, look, for me, that was a racing accident. You, you know, he's he's taken on the world champion. Both hard races, they've gone for it. You know, look, you could argue that Lewis should have conceded, given up the corner, and he risked damaging his front wing. So I think it's it's two competitive guys fighting for the same bit of tarmac. So that's why people turn their TVs on for, isn't it? Magic. Thanks, Christian. See you in China. Thank you. Thank you. Right, let's um, go down and keep out of everyone's way and uh, go down to Force India. Nice to hear from Christian Horner then. Force India. So, um, well, we were going to talk about the whole rest of the field today, weren't we? Let's talk about Force India, though, as we are here now. They qualified, well, Ocon qualified in the top 10, and there was some expectation there that they would be able to fight in that midfield battle with the likes of the Haas and the McLarens and the Renaults and maybe make some spaces up. Now, unfortunately for them, for the majority of the afternoon, they were just outside the points. Uh, Ocon was uh, in that midfield battle, but it seemed, as the laps were ticking down, that Force India was not going to have the afternoon that they'd hoped. So much so, in fact, that when Esteban walked up to me in the pen, uh, I believed he'd finished 11th. He hadn't. He finished 10th. Uh, taking it away from Carlos Sainz just two laps before the end. So points for Force India finally on the board, but a lot of work to do. Esteban, uh, I know you're hoping for more today, but did you see some some positivity in the in the results for moving on from Australia? Yeah, definitely. You know, positive weekend compared to Australia overall. Much better qualifying, tough uh, race uh, from yeah. the beginning to the end. It was too hard, uh, I would say. We were not at all um, easy uh, at any point, and we know what to improve. Uh, now we just uh, need to keep working, keep our head down. The team did a fantastic job this weekend. I'm sure we will improve again more. And you are in the fight. You were fighting with the McLarens, with the with the Renaults th throughout the contest. Yeah, definitely. I got uh, got Carlos uh, two laps before the end for that point. So it's fantastic reward for everybody um, working working that hard. You know, at the factory, uh, it means you know that we keep working and we will get there. So uh, Force India, one car in the points. Esteban Ocon, one car out of the points. Sergio Perez. Um, now one team, both car out of the points. Don't worry, we'll come to the rest of the midfield battle and the rest of the top ten in a minute. Um, Another team out of the points, Williams. It's been a really hard start to the season for them. I think they knew it was going to be tough. I don't think they were expecting it to be quite this tough. Uh, anyway, Sorokin and Stroll both made the flag. Both of them never looked like they had a chance at the points. But for Sorokin, at least, it is a first checkered flag in Formula 1. And the and not just confidence, but the knowledge that you gain from that, so different to testing, and a really critical first step on that Formula 1 ladder for the young Russian. Yeah, that was uh, the first F1 race for me, yeah. and uh, really much the first F1 race mileage. As we both know, the testing didn't, didn't go so well as well. It's a good experience for sure. Uh, could even make up some positions on the start and lost it back, and then uh, there was a bit of not enough clearance for me whether, whether we were going to do with the strategy because it was up and downs a bit in some point of the race. So it was, uh, I was. Let's say not optimal managing the set because I didn't know if I'm going long or we're stopping soon. Uh, 
But yeah, I mean, anyway, from, from the onwards, it was kind of a good race when you were in clean air. Uh, I tried all the range of compounds, which is a good point. At least we collect some data. Uh, yeah, we lost, I mean, obviously quite a bit of track time, you know, fighting, uh, you know, the, the car passing, uh, the quick cars coming uh, over for one lap. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was not optimal race, uh, obviously, for the results and for the track time overall. Uh, but I think in terms of the again the work and the experience I got, I could be quite happy. And I think the, the pace over the second set and over the the last set of tires was was quite good because obviously we lost quite a lot in the beginning and then you know like one third of the race and then actually we got it back to more or less where we've been. Uh, so yeah, still need to work on some areas like the first lap. It's we're not really in position to to fight the people or to, to stay to stay with them, you know, to, to use their mistakes or something else. And obviously, you know, when it's a big group of cars, it makes it live very easily, uh, not very easily at all. Um, so yeah, but again, it's experience. Uh, we're moving ahead. So. Back in the points again today. This man, hi Nico. Looked like an exciting race for you. Um, well, I don't know. Did it? <laughs> yeah, it really. Well, it looked, I mean, to be honest, the whole race looked really fascinating. Not fascinating, exciting. That's the word I need to use. It was for us. Was it for you? Yeah, I think it was okay. There was some action, um, some periods, you know, where there was a bit of racing going on and wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff. And there were some moments that were not so exciting. A lot of uh, fuel management today. Um, that was a big subject. Um, that's something, you know, drivers probably don't like so much. But we all, I think, had to do it and in the same boat. But... I think we got the best result that we could today. I'm happy about the sixth position. So, uh, yeah, we'll take that. And obviously points in Australia, points here. Does that start to show the level that you're at? Does it start to show the consistency between different types of circuits? Well, it's only two, two out of two now. I think uh, we need to wait a little bit. But I feel our package does work you know, reasonably well on, on all tracks. I don't see a reason why it shouldn't be you know good also now in Shanghai but uh, the slightly concerning or not so good thing today is the you know the Torosso pace and the Haas pace they were quite a you know a bit faster than us and, and finished the race like 30 seconds ahead so not don't like that and uh, yeah we need to push hard and um, catch these guys and beat them thank you enjoy your uh, journey we'll see you in China in a few days time thanks Nico uh, let's carry on going down now to um, I think let's talk about McLaren uh, because um, obviously with the Renault engines in the back of their cars just as the Renault team obviously uh, have the Renault engines in the back not a great qualifying day yesterday for McLaren but managed to get both Stoffel van Dorn and Fernando Alonso home in the points believe it or not Fernando Alonso now sits fourth in the drivers championship and i think if you told him that before the season started he would have been a very happy boy yeah very happy very happy i think I'm the really team did a, a great job um you know really good, good stops game. good strategy both cars in the points again uh, in australia uh, fifth here seventh so i think it's a it's a great start of the year but um we need to to look at the overall picture of the weekend we were not quick enough here uh, we lack uh, a little bit of speed especially in qualifying so we need to look at this and uh, hopefully improve that and start in a better position next time what are your hopes for china given how well you went china i mean uh, where do we start australia that's the one uh, and here two totally different circuits and then we go to china again another different type of circuit yeah i think uh, it's a question mark for for all the teams you know because we saw quite extreme different performance uh, from one circuit to, to to the next one you know in terms of mclaren uh, toro rosso has so the, the mid uh, feel um, it seems that uh, you know depends track to track the, the performance uh, keep changing so in australia we, we don't know exactly uh, but i think uh, it has to be better than this you know we we were quite um, quite down here underperforming and uh, we cannot repeat that you know we were always confident after yesterday that a, a good result was possible again today um, yeah after my start i thought uh, it was maybe going to be difficult i was absolutely last after turn one so not a not a great start to race but from there on uh, you know we were very ambitious had a good strategy on the car we knew our race pace was better than uh, than a lot of the other people and uh, yeah to, to get home eight and have both cars in the points again is, uh, is a great result for us why is it so much better in race trim than in quality trim it's uh, it's hard to explain at the moment i think we got a bit of uh, you know an analysis and work to do um, i think it'll get better over over the next races and 
obviously when we will be able to start in in a, in a few higher positions it'll be it'll be better for us as well to uh, you know to finish on a higher place now we told you that we would explain the story of the point scorers today behind that fight at the front behind that expectation of the mercedes and the ferraris and the red bulls there was I think the standout performer of qualifying, which was Pierre Gasly in the Toro Rosso. They had an update at the start of the weekend, but I don't think even the team expected it to be quite as good as it was. Pierre Gasly suddenly found himself not just up in the points, but in fifth place. And then when Kimi Raikkonen retired from the race, that fifth place became fourth place. Pierre Gasly came home for... Well done, boys. Okay. Complimenti. Uh, for, with the exception of Sebastian Vettel's win at Monza back in 2008, the team's equal best result ever in Formula One with a Honda engine. We sent a really strong message today and to show that the, the engine is, uh, is actually pretty good because you cannot finish fourth in, a, in Formula One without a, a good engine. So uh, definitely Honda made a, a massive step. Um, big congrats to them and a big thanks. Uh, and, and I know we still have some, some upgrades coming. So I hope it motivates everyone uh, in Japan and also in England in Milton Keynes uh, to push even harder. But, no, definitely the, the, the engine was great and uh, it, it's looking good for, for the next couple of races. Yeah. The surprise of Pierre Gasly's fourth position, of course, you know, we made the point of a Honda engine, but it is a real point because up until this year, if you'd have said that a Honda engine at a track like this would be able to compete with Mercedes powered cars, Renault powered cars and Ferrari powered cars, People would have laughed you out of the paddock, and yet they did. And uh, Pierre drove beautifully, but you know, take nothing away from that car, that engine. That's a proper package because it beat these guys. Uh, really, the standout team after Australia, in terms of surprise and heading that midfield, was Haas. Um, those pit stops, the, the problems they had in Australia, all put behind them this weekend. The pit stops were perfect, the team was firing. And only really that battle between Gasly and Magnussen at the start of the race that Gasly won ended up being the difference between the two because Magnussen from that point on, once he'd lost those few seconds, never really was able to get them back again and fight with Gasly. But a good day for Haas, got over those problems from Australia, points on the board, Magnussen, as he has been really from the start of things in Australia, chest puffed out, he's a happy boy. But, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, good, and you know I am enjoying. So uh, happy about today. Uh, really good to to get ten points uh, and get the championship started. So uh, really proud of the team, uh, especially the guys in the pit stop for uh, keeping their head cool and just getting getting back to basics and, and do what they do best uh, and and deliver. And the fight in the midfield is so intense. How happy are you to finish ahead of uh, of all the other teams? I'm very happy. I mean, I had I had a lot of vibration from my front left suspension. Um, I think from from the contact I had on lap one, uh, but it lasted. I was very nervous and uh, I backed off completely and didn't want to touch any curbs or anything. So I I, I couldn't really fight the the Toro Rosso and Gasly, uh, but you know, still happy with with P5. So there's your man. There's uh, there's Kevin. Uh, Magnussen just uh, debriefing with Gunther uh, and yeah great weekend for Haas I think we all agree now there's one team so far that is missing from this post-race edition of Paddock Pass that team is Sauber and Sauber had an outstanding race um, only Four drivers today managed to make it to the chequered flag, having done one stop. They were Sebastian Vettel, Valtteri Bottas, Lewis Hamilton and Marcus Ericsson. We spoke about the brilliant drive that Pierre Gasly had to put him in fourth, and that won him driver of the day. Had he not, I think, his best race ever in Formula One, and equally deserving of driver of the day, Marcus Ericsson, um, came home ninth. And... What's amazing about this is new power units uh, in the Alfa Romeo. Yeah, okay, it's a Ferrari badge as an Alfa Romeo, but a big step up from where they were at last year. Brand new suspension concepts on the car, brand new aero concepts on the car. It's all new down here. The team is taking a very new leap into what is for them the unknown. And they really struggled in Australia. They got it all together here. 
Ruth Buscom, brilliant strategist, came up with a strategy that Ericsson had to make work and he didn't put a foot, genuinely didn't put a foot wrong today. Um, he gets kicked way too often, I think, as a Formula One driver, but Marcus Ericsson today, him and Gasly, for me, drivers of the day. I think uh, this weekend has been a positive weekend. We've been in the mix in the midfield, which is a very tight group of cars, you know, it's a lot of cars during the midfield. Uh, we took a decision yesterday to focus more on the race setup compared to qualifying setup. Uh, so we knew we would give away a bit of performance in qualifying. Maybe we gave away a bit more than we expected. But still going into today, I was still very confident that we can have a strong race. Uh, and then obviously the key was to have a good start and first lap, which we had. So I was running already, I think, 12th or 13th after lap one, which was the key to, to be able to pull this strategy off. And then, you know, as a team, we, we knew that the one stop was uh, our best chance, but we knew also it was going to be really tight with both tires and fuel to make it last all the way to the end. So it was all about trying to manage and, and really be on the limit, but not going over the limit. And then also the second half of the race was very tough for me to pick the right fights, you know, because I knew it was fast cars coming with fresher tires, and I knew that you know, I don't want to use the tires too much fighting these people, so I had to be really clever and not fight too hard, but obviously you don't want to let anyone pass, so it was all about thinking about the end game. Uh, but in the end, I think we pulled off a perfect race, both from the driving, but also from the strategy and, and the whole sort of teamwork setting up the car. So I'm extremely proud of everyone uh, down in, in, in the team, you know, because we, we've worked, worked extremely hard. And also, you know, in the winter with Alfa Romeo coming in, it's been a lot of things happening, changing over the winter. A lot of work has been put in, and to be already in the point second weekend is a great success. So that's your lot from Paddock Pass here in Bahrain. Brilliant race, tons of excitement, and we cannot wait to get to China. Uh, your next Paddock Pass is coming your way in just four days' time, because that is when we'll be in Shanghai. The paddock is in full swing of packing up. Half of this place is flying out tonight. We fly on Tuesday. We will see you there. Sebastian Vettel leads the championship. It's two wins from two. Can he make it three in Shanghai? Can Mercedes fight back? Can Red Bull get in the mix? This season is looking fantastic, not to mention that incredibly exciting and incredibly close midfield battle, which now you have to say also includes Sauber. And who would have thought that just a couple of weeks ago? Brilliant stuff. Can't wait to get to Shanghai. For now, though, from us here in Bahrain, it's a very warm goodbye.